this video, we're going to go over how to connect Stack AI to your AI enabled chatbot. Now, for those who have been following along with the series, we're building an entire chatbot, especially for contracting businesses or any service based business. In the last video, we went over how to design the flow or the main component of your bot, meaning the appointment setting part. In this video, we're going to make the bot a lot smarter by actually connecting it to Stack AI, which is powered by ChatGPT in the background to be able to answer any sort of question that might arise. Quick little recap. The last time we built out this flow, which goes to gives the user the option of four possible paths. Assuming that they choose the one of book an appointment, it would ask them a couple of questions, send the answer to those questions over to Google Sheets, where they would be. And your, your sheet should look something a bit like this. Now, for those who are aware, knowledge bases is what Stack AI is going to use in order to generate answers to whatever your customer is asking. So, for example, it cannot take generic information for questions like where are you guys located, what type of work do you, do you do, or it cannot, any question that is specific to your business, it will not be able to answer without a knowledge base. If it doesn't find an answer in the knowledge base, then it will give a generic answer. It's very important that any information that is different from the norm, for example, is included in some sort of knowledge base. And these can be quite simple. A really simple way of using knowledge base is going on your website. If there is an FAQ section, that's basically your knowledge base. Or if you have any documents that you give to your customers to explain to them how your entire process works, those are the type of documents that you would actually input into Stack AI. And I'll show you how in just one second. So let's go ahead and connect Stack AI. If you want to head over to stackai.com, it's going to look something a bit like this. So when you log in and I'll, we'll start a new project, you're going to want to come over here to database documents and Q&A and then just select this document Q&A using document search. Once you've done that, you're going to have a document that looks something very similar to this. It'll simply be empty. Now, if this is your first time on Stack, yeah, this might look very confusing, but go over and go over each card and you'll see how simple it gets once you get the hang of it. On the left-hand side, you've got the input, which is simply what your customer has told the model. In the middle, OpenAI, is the actual model itself. Now, this is GPT-4. This is more widely known as ChatGPT, which is the consumer, customer-facing version of it. But you can go ahead and change the model. The as more advanced ones are able to answer more complex questions. Keep in mind, the more advanced the model you use, the more typically it costs per run. To give you some sort of reference point, for this specific example, we're using about 2,000 tokens per run, which comes out to around 8 to 10 cents per run, something to keep in mind. However, something that is cheaper, like like a GBT 3.5, that would cost about 5 cents per run, or even less. Now, if you were simply to use these three cards right here, this would simply be Jet GBT. The one thing that makes this a lot more interesting, a lot more usable, is you can actually give context to your bot so that it knows what to base its answers on. For example, in this case, we're giving it a PDF version of a website that we went and you can use a tool like Cloud Convert in order to do that. I don't know why it's not letting me go on that right now, but if you'll simply press cloudconvert.com, go on the tool section and use this tool right here. You can paste in any website, you can even paste in a sitemap and it will give you PDF versions of that. And once you've gone ahead and uploaded those files right here, that will give context to your bot. Another very important point to keep in mind is your prompt that you give or the instructions that you give your bot. This is a simple example of one where we are basically telling the bot what to do, who they are, and how to answer. This can make or break your bot for a very simple reason. There is the concept called garbage in, garbage out. What that simply means is that the quality of the output is dictated by the quality of the input. If you make it a very, if you put in a very vague input, you're gonna get a very vague output. That's why it's important to specify what it is that you want. This is just an example, but you can make it very long and very, very detailed. And you're also gonna to wanna to find a balance between very detailed prompt and a prompt that isn't costing you as much because every time that you send a request over, you're using more and more tokens. So now what I would suggest is just go ahead, play around with it, see what models you work best because Maybe you can do this with GBT-5 and you get the same sort of answers. In that case, there's no point in using GBT-4. Go ahead, play around with it, see what works best for your specific use case. Once you're done, you're going to want to press on deploy right here. 
and then you're going to go ahead over to the points. So now bear with me, this is going to get a bit more technical, but this it's not going to last very long. You want to go ahead and take this entire URL right here. Then you're going to head one head back over to voice flow. Now, if you watch the last video, you'll have a setup that looks a bit like this. The component that we're going to be working on today is the ask a question one. We're going to go ahead and take an arrow that points here. And we're going to put a card that says, what would you like to know? Once you've gone ahead and put that, you're going to want to put a capture button. And then this is simply telling it to ask a question and then whatever the user answers, we'll keep that as the last utterance. And then very similar to Zapier, you're going to want to go ahead and call a API call. We're going to use post because we are sending information over. And that URL that you had, this is where you post it. After that, you want to go, after that, head over to, head over to, to headers. And you can simply copy and paste this information. First one is authorization. And then you're going to want to put the word bear. And if you remember, you can go back and stack AI. And you see this information right here. Right now, it's blurred out. But this, if you press on this little button that says show token, this is your private key that allows you to communicate with stack AI. So you're going to want to press on show token and then copy. It's going to be a list of numbers right here. Copy that list of numbers into here. Once that's done, and the rest of this, you can simply copy and paste it. Put content type, and lastly, application dash slash JC. Once you've done that, head over to the body, go into raw, and then you can just copy and paste this, which is we are telling that the input is the variable API question. Now, in order for this to work, we're going to create a new variable called API question. So for that, simply go ahead and in the logic section, go to set. You can put it right above it. And we're just telling it that we want the last utterance, which changes every new message. We want to send that, or that code into a variable called API question. Variable and that is going to be last utterance. Simple enough. One part where I used to get stuck a lot is actually with making sure that the variable names are exactly the same because these softwares are case sensitive, which means if that if you have API with a capital A on one side, on the other side, if it is not, it will not be detected as the same thing. So just make sure that you copy the word that you use as a variable the exact same way. Once you've gone ahead and done all of that, the last thing we want to do is capture a response. Now, this is very simply going to be out dash zero, and you're going to want to enter that out dash zero into a variable called API. API response. Then you want to go ahead and send. And that is pretty much it for Stack AI. Now, once you've entered in all your data, then you're going to want to head over to success. And you're going to actually display what that data said. So since we told it, look, we're going to send over API question, and then we're going to retrieve API response. The next message that we want to display is exactly what Stack AI returned. So that would be API response. Now, depending on how you got your Stack AI set up, this might change. However, you can. There's two versions. You can either have ChatGPT or Stack AI ask a question directly in the API response, or otherwise, and what we're going to use is simply put another line in the line of code to ask, is there anything else? Now, the reason why I specify that is because if both end with a question, it might, it's not going to be a very good user experience. Something to keep in mind. Then we're going to add some buttons to simply say yes or no. If they said yes, we're simply going to bring them right back to what would you like to know. And if they said no, we're going to send them the bot will end. And 
And that is a very simple loop for what would you like to know? Because once they say, I'm gonna have a question, he's gonna ask them, what would you like to know? Then we're gonna capture the user's response as last utterance. We're gonna set that utterance to API question. That API question is gonna be sent over to Stack AI, doing a bit of logic on GPC side. We're gonna get an answer back. We're gonna tell them, is there anything else they would like to know? They have to say yes, they're going right back to what would you like to know? If they say no, it ends. And then it just keeps going. The one little thing I'm gonna add right here, that just to enhance the customer's experience, is if, in what, like for example, what happens if in the middle of this loop, they want to book an appointment? Now, voice law is a very interesting thing called intents, and you can apply these anywhere. And the purpose of an intent, as the name suggests, is to detect an intent within another conversation. So you can have these anywhere, and you can make it so that, let's say you wanna create a new intent for, let's say somebody says, I wanna book an appointment in the middle of the conversation, or in the middle of them asking questions. Then you could make a new intent, Call the book an appointment. And what you're going to want to add to it is our sample phrases of how people would say that. For example, book an appointment, that could be said as, I'd like to book an appointment. Another way to say that would be book me in. I'll add a couple more such as, can you guys come see me? And you can get pretty creative with these to the point where you could have sentences that might not directly say just want to book an appointment, but for you it's good enough where you want to initiate that sequence. And one example would be, well, how much does this cost? And the important thing here is that you want this little red bar. The more sentences, the more utterances you add, the stronger or the better it believes that it can detect the intent. So go ahead and create as many as you want of these. And once that's done, you can go ahead and press that connect that button right up to here to look great. Let's book you in. Now what this is gonna do is that if at any point during this conversation, VoiceFlow detects that the intent or the question that the customer is asking is relating to book an appointment, then it's just gonna detect this and send you straight back to great, let's book you in. So that was a really quick and simple overview of how to connect Stack AI to your chatbot. We're only scratching the surface of Stack AI. There's so many more things that you can do with it from connecting different large language models such as Anthropic or even Azure to loading different data loaders. For example, you can upload entire YouTube videos and tell them, well, based on this YouTube video, make me a, uh, like summarize it. You can get really, really in depth with it. And as we go along, if you guys want more videos about how to actually use Stack AI or different methods of using it, let me know. I'm more than willing to look into it. The next video is going to be a lot more about how to incorporate scheduling into your Zapier flows, specifically Google Calendar or Calendly, depending on what you use. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to reach out to us, you can use the link in the description. If not, I wish you all a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.